courtesy of uh, Fast Company. Big up Fast Company. So Fast Company announced this a few months, a couple of months ago, maybe a month ago. I forgot to cover it. Um, but big up my guy Samuel Ross. It's been recently announced that he's gonna be he's hired now by sorry by Beats. Um, they've tapped Samuel Ross from a cold wall to design some shit for Beats, which is pretty cool. It says, yeah, Apple's reputation as the most secret, um, what's that, secretive design company in the world, employing a tight-knit group of designers and many of whom we've never seen or heard of to develop its products. But now Apple's headphone brand Beats is tapping an external designer to usher in its next era. Samuel Ross is the first principal design consultant for Beats, which I love that title, actually, isn't it, right? Principal design consultant. The, um, even if you don't know his name, once you read his credentials, you may be not be surprised. He's a perfect fit for the brand that needs a strong identical design design point of view and also fashionable um, cultural cachet at the time when apple design is facing a substantial culture shift ross is tapping into beats as something of an auteur to chart a new future with the headphone company he plans to use his role position of beats to confident counterpoint to apple from with in apple ross is a celebrated cross-medium british artist who runs industrial design firm sra and streetwear inspired um street sorry inspired fashion label or cold wall he has a comfortable he has a, sorry he's as comfortable with power powdered coated steel as Japanese nylon and as grounded in strictness of brutalism with the apomorphic asymmetry. Um, he's, collaborated, he's collaborated on products with the emphasis on um, shoes in particular alongside some of the biggest names like Nike Converse, Dr. Martins. Beast has now tapped Ross to lead in this new era. The principal design consultant role is the first um, at Beats and Apple at large. Um, to put it bluntly, Ross is uh, as rare an outsider who's been handed the keys to the Apple-owned design and arrangement of not perfect precedent. Don't reminisce of how Nike welcomed in the late Verjabo to blow off some of its more prized assets. For how Crocs invited designer uh, Shelly Bembry to break his mold. Duh, duh. So that's what he's doing, right? So Sam Ross is now part of Beats. So the sick thing about it is that the first thing that he's done for them so far has been these headphones which i'm hoping they kind of do a bit more of a breakdown to give us some sort of insight but these new beat studio pros which is basically beats is reintroducing themselves to the market again in terms of you know giving people um another option in the wireless um you know active noise cancellation headphone market and they're designed really really nicely i love the fucking um monotone colors that they sort of use for them right you've got this black you've got this nice lavy a uh, nice brown and this sort of slate colorway they look really really well done but i would love it if they could give us more information as to what part samuel ross actually played in the design of these headphones because i would hope he actually played the design you know part in process of maybe picking the colors the final form factor the fact that they do look very minimal in terms of the design um and you know overall the feel of them they kind of do stand out in the market based on what's currently out there so my hope would be that he designed you know all of it from the ground up but i'm not really too sure how far it goes and i'm not too sure if this is one of these kind of like temporary temporary sorry positions where he kind of holds it for a set period of time and they get somebody else into do it but i do like this idea of these companies like beats that is audio companies kind of tapping in designers to help them sort of launch um these products and kind of build them from the ground up. i think that's actually a good way to kind of do it the only thing i'm surprised about is the price 350 they're a bit pricier than i would have expect them to be the beat studio pros i thought they would have been maybe 250 would have made more sense to me but so far from checking a couple of int, you know clips online reviews um they look like they will definitely be within my warehouse something i'd be interested in purchasing because at the moment i'm using a pair of sony i think they're, i think they're like mx4s or something but unfortunately the fucking headphone strap kind of broke on mine right so i've got i've got a pair of these you can't maybe see them on the screen but i basically use these as my like you know bluetooth wireless headphones i use when i'm usually traveling or whatnot i don't really use them in the gym anymore because my hair is too big but obviously the fucking thing in the strap kind of broke so i had to tape this up here on the side but they've been working pretty well i think these are the mark threes i'm pretty sure so these are really solid really good sound they, they have the battery charge lasts for ages um and they also have um they also have a good fucking um what's that thing called they also sleep once you once you use them for a long time um no so once you not use them it leaves them to the side they'll kind of auto sleep um which i've heard that the beats headphones don't do that so that's the only thing i'm a little bit concerned about and somebody mentions on their review that these beats um studio pros do mark up very easily with your fingerprints so you can be wearing them and use them a lot and then you know they can be marked up really easy so you can maybe ha have to get another colorway to kind of use and i've also heard they don't go to sleep 
and what else oh but they fold really easily so that's something i've been hearing that's been really good um there's also the ability to put the 3.5 millimeter jack inside there and use them as regular headphones there's also ability to use them while they're charging i know some people do that i don't personally if they're charging i just let them charge but I know some people like to use their headphones while they're charging they fold really well they've got a nice little case there so they look really cool um and there's also a review here courtesy of verge who kind of speak about it um, they say they look like a lazy refresh from the outside, but the noise cancelling Studio Beats Pros include a ton of new features like transparency mode and Lucis USB-C audio. They certify Beats' unique appeal as a dual ecosystem brand. For me personally, working out a bunch and running a bunch, I'm still, I need to get another pair because I fucking lost mine. But my original Beats, pa Power Beats Pros, I had these Beats Power Beat Pros that I always used to use that I fucking left behind in a fucking club. Uh beats power beats is that it oh, is that what i've got yeah i had these on the i had them in black but unfortunately i left them in the fucking club toilet one day i'm sure somebody handed them in but i just didn't go back in time so i'm sure somebody's already taken them but i had these headphones and i fucking swear by them if you work out um and you sweat a lot like i do if you swap the nibs on these headphones for um you know for fucking foam tip nibs i swear on my life these are the best headphones for working out the fucking best ones i swear on my life these beats power pros i fucking you know beats pro sorry i fucking swear by them so i actually quite like beats for their you know for that side of things and most of the sound on beat headphones are right quite bass heavy and i obviously like a lot of you know i, I kind of like listening to music like that especially considering the type of music i listen to in terms of electronic music heavy metal and shit hip-hop and all that stuff when i'm out working out and whatnot running around town so that quite suits my purposes in that regard so i'm actually i'm intrigued about these and kind of maybe checking them out maybe going to a store and seeing what they kind of sound like when i'm doing them but let's see a quick little snapshot here of the verge and their review um they reviewed them and they said the good they said it's got better sound and active noise cancellation than the Studio Freeze. The transparency mode rigs works really well. But I've heard transparency mode still the best one is with the, um, what you call it? Um, uh, what you call it? Blue, the Apple headphones, they still are the best ones to use. Lucis Studio USB-C audio. Nativity supports both iOS and Android, which is good. The bad is still quite a long list. It says the vibe has gone unchanged for a little too long. The build quality doesn't fulfill right, doesn't fully rise to the premium price. Okay. So maybe feel a little bit too plastic. The ultra plush ear cups aren't replaceable. That's a real big shame to be fair, because one thing you notice when you start using wireless headphones, you start you realizing you use them often and you probably wear out the cups very quickly. Uh, especially if you travel a lot or you're just wearing them a lot on the commute and stuff so the fact that they're not replaceable is very concerning um audio quality isn't clear and balanced but unexceptional hmm that's that's really concerning because usually the sound i feel like on beats products is usually quite good the build quality might not be the best maybe you might not be the fan the branding but i do feel like the audio quality is usually quite good so they've given verge have given it a seven out of ten which is a pretty decent score but i still think seven out of ten isn't high enough to justify a three fifty dollar price tag or a three fifty pounds price tag it's a bit much you know if you're going to pay that price you might as well go out and buy the top of the line um you know headphones out there or add a bit more money and just get the beats what you call it the the apple studio what are they called uh the apple studio max is whatever that all the kids are wearing nowadays that might be an actual better way to kind of go about things but i do like the look of them i feel they look like fairly decent on this nice white lady is wearing them and she looks fairly cool with them on there they don't look that crazy and i quite like the different colors as well as we see here on flipping them um, what's his face sammy ross's account um i quite like the different colors here if I had to choose, I'd probably go for the fucking blacks, of course, or maybe the this kind of cream color colorway. The brown I wouldn't like because it probably you know blend too much with my skin. But I kind of like the actually, you know what? I should go for the navy or the or this kind of white creamy color. They'll be my probably picks to go with in terms of colorways. But I do like it. I like the approach. Um, you have got black, navy, deep brown, sorry, and sandstone. The name partnership with Sammy Ross. So again, big up Sammy Ross. Um, always been a big fan of the guy. I feel like he's really, really cool, really inspirational in terms of how he's approached things. He's clearly taken a bit of a turn and taken a step back from being the face of a Cold War. He's even said in a few interviews he's kind of pursuing the more contemporary art angle side of things. I did see the last day actually of his show, um, which was really good at the fucking White. 
Cube in Bermondsey. I uh, saw in um, the white, yeah, white Cube in Bermondsey here in South London. So he had like a little solo show that he put together, not a little one. It's actually a really big one that was really good. It kind of covered a lot of things, some sculpture, some installation, some art pieces and shit. So he's definitely what I would describe as being a multidisciplinary artist. But it's pr- quite cool to see him actively decide to take a step back from being the fucking streetwear fashion guy and decide to do the art thing because in my head I always thought he would do that in my head I always imagined him being like a Giorgio Armani type of person where he's just gonna end up designing like a 60 look you know a hundred look fucking collection you know six times a year until he's in his fucking 80s but clearly that was never the aim it was always kind of a, a point you know because I feel like early streetwear is always like that Early streetwear was an opportunity for people who are creative but didn't have the means to make a fully fledged fashion line or didn't have the means to start a magazine or open a store to get their vision out there. You had you had a, you had a point of view, you had something to say, you kind of put it in your clothing. And then you use the clothing to sort of like broaden that. To whether it be interior design, whether it be fucking activations, whether it be concerts, you know, gigs, whatever it may be. Um what you just kind of expand, expand, expand. So it's quite clear to, it's hard, quite interested to see that but in this scene people kind of love being the brand owner the kind of guy at the fucking end of the runway and stuff so i think it's quite refreshing to see that he actively kind of stepped away from that when he probably didn't need to to pursue something a little a way i feel like way harder to make it in a contemporary art world especially with the agencies and you know the studios out there and whatever it may be and the galleries it's very very difficult place to navigate the business dealings are very very shady and you know it's not the easiest place for us blacks to be in so the fact that he's actively trying to go there and do it the right way and kind of be in the spaces with all the fucking elites and the fucking top of the class size fucking great to see but it's also good to see on the side that he's doing all this amazing cool shit so big up samuel ross and i fucking love to see it